Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody has a nice start uh, to their weekend. Hopefully everybody's just enjoying life. And that's the number one thing and the most important part uh, for our day-to-day -day, uh, activities. If you are uh, brand new to the channel, again guys, thank you very much. We really do appreciate uh, the viewerships. The only thing we like, uh, the only thing we ask for uh, is to like, like the video, uh, share this video, uh, subscribe to this channel, uh, and we will continue uh, to provide unbiased uh, daily technical uh, analysis. So let's talk about the tape. Um, we start the last two weeks of 2023, uh, the queues are up over 52%. That's a lot, right? That's absolutely a lot. Um, very, very impressive rally. What started out as a lot of people talking about, well, it's only three, four stocks taking out the market. Well, obviously that's not the case anymore. Uh, everything is uh, going pretty much crazy, orbital, and like I've said all the time, um, you know, we don't know when this magic carpet ride is going to end. Eventually, will it's just it's just obvious. Uh, again, when I first started out, uh, the big move was during the dot com era, and, and we thought. It was never going to end, right? Uh, I just—it was one of those things that we thought, "Hey, this is going to be the greatest thing in the world. This is the easiest thing in the world. Stocks just buy, go higher, right? Stuff dips, just get bought." And unfortunately, one day, um, the buyers got tired. They just—that's what happened. The buyers got tired, and the bubble popped, and yada yada yada. Everybody who started out in '98, '99, and 2000, they thought that we were untouchable. We thought that uh, you know we were doing something right. The reality is none of us knew what we were doing. It was just all momentum. Uh, we were heavy overnight traders, and we got lucky. That's the bottom line. We got lucky. And a lot of traders uh, who started out, especially in 2024, you know, you, congratulations, man. You started out an incredible year. It's like the, the traders who started out in 2009, uh, the generational lows of the traders who started out uh, in, two, in two, uh, 2020, the pandemic. Uh, you know, 2024 is just a great year. And if you started this year and you're having some success, just uh, just just take a step back, put that money away, put set aside some taxes, because again, the market is never as good uh, and never as bad. Uh, the one the one thing uh, the one thing that uh, unfortunately we did see a lot of traders, and if you go on social media, there's so many just negative accounts. The market sucks. The world's gonna end. Uh, you know, some of these people just won't be happy until a meteor hits the earth and we all die. Right, that's just the reality. Again, I don't know how you can live your life that way, but I choose not to. And I'm sure, and I'm certain to say, a lot of you guys feel exactly the same way. But uh, from that point of view, is a lot of people uh, were trying to find the top in this market uh, for the last basically 11 and a half months. We only have two weeks left in the year, uh, and it's been again an, an incredible ma magic carpet ride. And the question is, well, where can this market actually rest? There's actually an answer to that, right? There actually really is an answer to that. Instead of shorting stocks based on what you feel uh, this can't happen anymore, when you're shorting something or, or you're buying something, this is the whole point of technical analysis, you need a point of reference, okay? If you're shorting uh, the cues here and here and here and here, there's no point of reference. There's no point of reference. You know, the, the idea of it can't go higher, oh yeah, it can. Um, I remember, you know, I remember back in the dot-com era, when Amazon was trading, uh, I think it was $150 a share, and it had a PE of 3,000, they said, oh, there's no way Amazon could go higher, right? So you need a point of reference, okay? We're not that smart. Nobody could ta uh, time the market. Um, and anybody who's been shorting the market for the last, uh, especially the last 11 and a half months, uh, you kind of know, you know, you kind of know what, what, you've, what you didn't accomplish this year. And unfortunately, a lot of traders will, you know, you know, lose their solvency status trying to pick a top. And there is an actual point of reference that we could look to in the next couple of weeks to see, hey, maybe the market pauses there and maybe there is a technical area, right? A technical area that the market can, you know, eventually at least pause and give us a tradable move back to the downside. So let's look at the monthly chart, okay? Uh, the monthly chart is going to show you the all-time highs on the QQQs, okay. The all-time highs on the QQQs was the November, uh, November first, 
2021 highs. Okay, that is 408.71. Uh, as you can tell here, we closed in the 10, we closed in the 105s, uh, 405s in the Qs, and the all-time high again is 408.71. If you're going to at least take a stab at the market and want to see if you can get a quote-unquote generational double top at least use 408.71 as your barometer. So in other words, if we start to speed up on Monday and Tuesday and we get up to this 408.71 level and you know 408.71 is the all-time highs and that is your reference point, if it stalls out there, right? If it stalls out there and starts going lower, then by all means, take a shot, take a short on the market and use the high of that, you know, use the high of the candle for the day as your max pain. So a lot of times... When you see these double top plays, right, or potential, I don't want to use the word double top, potential, you know, potential softening plays, uh, you know, potential blow off type of areas, you want, you need a point of, hey, here's the high of the day. Here's my generational area of point of reference. I'm going to use that top. So you could, you could, you could realistically be risking you know, 30, 40, 50 cents for a potential, you know, two, three week rollover, but at least give yourself an opportunity. Okay. Don't just start randomly shorting stocks because you know, it, you feel it in your gut because you woke up this morning feeling great and you know where the, the stock is going to is going to start start stalling out. And nobody even saying that 40871 is going to be the high. Okay, we could just go right through it and just continue, but at least if you are playing that game, give yourself a shot. Give yourself a technical shot off of a technical level and if you know it doesn't hold that level, you can get out, get a paper cut in your knee and keep on moving forward. So that's it. So going into this week, again, what what do we, you know, what have we been saying for the last 68 videos? The market's strong, right? Market's strong. I, I didn't even record a video on Wednesday because it's the same thing. It's literally the same thing every single day. It's just a rotation of stocks. And our job is to find the next rotation of stocks uh, that are coming out of their channels. So uh, again, the message continues to be uh, watch the names that are coming out of their channels, um, buy strong stocks that broke out the previous day on dips, okay? and rinse repeat until we start losing the previous day's low. That's it, that is the message. You know, it, it, somebody was joking around uh, in the webinar on Friday and they said, Dan, on the weekend update, you should just you, you should just uh, turn on the video, go bullish and end the video. I mean, that's what it is right now, right? That's what it is. Uh, again, we're conscious, all jokes aside, we're conscious of uh, any potential rug pull. I'm not naive, I'm doing this in nearly a quarter of a century. I know this magic carpet ride is going to end but the point is, I know the previous day's lows, right? I know the previous day's channels. If, they, if it get, gets violated, then hell, of course, I'm going to start shorting the market. But the point is, until that happens, you can see here. You can look, look at, just look in the last, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What does the last 10 days of the QQQs have in common, right? They're putting in higher highs and higher lows, right? That's the point. It's higher highs, higher lows. Until we break that chain of command, that we break that, uh, that cycle, the market's going to continue to do the same thing. As you can see here, the Qs are just hugging the five-day. Every single time it touches, it bounces along. So now our job is to find strong stocks coming out of a tight channel, right? We've highlighted several names just in the last couple of days that should resume, and they did, right? And they did. Let's start off with NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA had another big, big move on Friday. It took out the previous two channels. Uh, traded up as, as high as 294. Uh, they're coming for this week, uh, the 1222 expiration. They're coming for uh, the 495s, the 500s, and we saw even the 505s uh, being traded. Look at the all-time high here on NVIDIA, right? It's not that far off. It really is not that 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 far off. It's only six, seven points away. I'm sorry, um, about 15 points away uh, from the all-time high. So it, it's it's getting there. Tesla continues to uh, to do well, right? I thought... Uh, there was a shot this thing could possibly even rest on Friday. It didn't, okay? It keeps on grinding. All it needs to do, guys, I'm telling you, all it needs to do, you see this linear regression line, right? All it needs to do is get above this linear regression line, and we have all air. Again, they're coming for uh, this week's expiration, the 260s, the 265s, and we saw some 270s. Again, buy the, you know, it's the sequence of buy the dips into weak openings of NVIDIA, uh, Tesla, all the same as well. Uh, Meta, you know, Meta is getting very, very close uh, to coming out of this whole entire formation, guys. Very, very close. It got rejected here at the top of the range from the high from two days ago. At least that's a point of reference. That was kind of my point with the Qs. 
If Meta wakes up this week, this thing could be really, really aggressive. They were coming for uh, the 340 uh, weeklies for, for this week, so very strong. Look at Amazon. Amazon is so close, guys. Look how close this thing is. It's very, very close to busting out of this whole range. Uh, this looks good as well. Arm, again, another example of a strong stock. Remember we talked about this on Thursday's video? Another strong stock opening weaker, right? So look what happened. It was a strong stock. It broke out. It opened weaker, shorts got trapped at the rising support, and they ripped it back up again. Okay, keep an eye on ARM this week. You know, if this thing starts getting above this 72 area, man, this thing could wake up as well. So we have, you know, we have a lot of names uh, that we are watching. The market continues to be strong. At least now you have a point of reference in the QQQs if you want to take a stab at a potential double top. At least you have a point of reference and are not. Uh, guessing. Uh, if you are a brand new trader and this is your first year trading, congratulations, guys. It, it's a big deal. Even if you didn't make, uh, you know, you didn't make your fortune and your hopes and dreams in one year. Again, you're not supposed to. Okay, your first year, first several years, you're really supposed to just take everything in, uh, just be a sponge, absorb everything. If you're fortunate enough to to have a mentor or find a mentor uh, that could fill you in on the details and you know, cross the T's and dot the I's. That's a blessing, okay? If you're trying to do this on your own, it's going to be tough, I'm telling you. Uh, it took me six, pretty much about five, six years after I started trading with all the ups and downs to kind of get a, 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 you know, at least a handle what the hell I was doing. And this was by myself. Uh, I'm going on year 25. It's gonna be March. It's gonna be 25 years for me in March. It's a very tough business. So if you, if you are brand new, just have faith, guys. Keep working. Keep on looking at charts. Even again, even if you have no idea what you're looking at, don't let anybody distract you from social media, your friends, your family, the naysayers. Well, I can't do it. Well, that means if they can't do it, doesn't mean you can't do it, right? Uh, you know, there, there's only what 550 players that make you know that make the NBA roster. Not everybody could be in the league, right? But it doesn't mean you can't be. So the point is, folks, continue uh, to work. Continue to ask questions. Continue to be a sponge. I uh, have faith, keep working. And one day just, it magically happens. Folks, I'm telling you, I used to trade for uh, a hedge fund between 2001 and 2003 by the name of Gadul Capital. Okay. Gadul Capital, uh, Stephen Gadul was the owner. Um, Gadul Capital was uh, the spinoff. It was the spinoff of Herzog, Heim, and Gadul, right? Herzog was a top mar market maker doing uh, during the 2000s, and Merrill Lynch bought them out for 900 million. So uh, the Herzog, the Herzog, uh, the Gadul part, they started their own hedge fund, and um, there was no worse trader on the planet from 2001 and 2003. It, it's impossible. I didn't have a single winning week. I didn't have a single winning month for two years, for absolute two years. And if the fund ultimately didn't have a really nasty, almost blow up, uh, I would have got fired. I don't know how how Stephen kept me. Uh, for two years, but I was absolutely the worst trader on the planet. So it took me about another three years after that for things to really click. And when it does, it's a beautiful thing through education. Um, it's a wonderful thing. You're in control of your trading. And the most important part is it's not going to magically happen. You have to put in the work. Uh, you have to do everything what everybody else is not doing. Guys, there's the, the dumbest thing I think I've heard ever, uh, and I've heard some dumb things on social media, it's this whole adage of 90% of the traders don't make money. Guys, there's trillions of dollars being exchanged every single day. It's not that 90% of the traders are losing money. It's 90% of the new traders are, are losing money. That's the reality, okay? That's the reality, folks. Um, you know, you need to get through that year three to five. Once you hit that year three to five, you should really get that good, um, you should really get that big light bulb moment. Um, and once you do, it does really become a special, special thing that you accomplish because it's something that not everybody uh, can. So half the faith, guys, keep working. Uh, it's, it's. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I know a lot of you guys are underfunded. Uh, but again, if you push through and you have faith, things will click. Guys, God bless. Have a wonderful last two weeks of the year. Uh, for all you guys who are joining the webinar, again, and, and you are exposed to the uh, for we, we believe is a wonderful world of pivots. We are really going to give you a kind of an alternative look at the market for 2024, and you will be shocked uh, what you can accomplish uh, during that time. Guys, God bless, stay blessed, stay healthy, and I will see you all on Monday. Take